Right, so there's a little bit of confusion over my sketchbooks. I have this, which is sketchbook one, and this, which is sketchbook two, but the little pieces I cut out and stuck in a sketchbook ended up in sketchbook two. So what I thought I'd do is I'll show you sketchbook two. A little bit of decoration on here. I use my glitter pens, but they don't seem to have shown up very well on this black. Bit of a shame, really. I was imagining something much more vibrant. Now, this was a disaster. I drew this, and then I drew roads and things on the front, and they were awful. So I cut them off, glued this onto the page behind, and I thought I'd do an underground world with rats trying to dominate the earth. And it's not really very good, but it amused me. Now, the brown felt pens had come through, as you can see there, and this was a bit of a mess, so I just decorated it a little bit, make it look a bit prettier. And then I got on to doodling. Now, I love doodling. It was great if I was really working hard to learn something and then my brain was starting to get very tired, I'd just do a doodle. Here's my first attempt at hands. That took quite a while and I used a tip I picked up off other YouTubers where I just highlight the better hands and don't highlight the worse hands like this one here and this awful thumb there so that your eye is drawn to the good ones. A little bit of playing about with watercolour. I really have a lot to learn with watercolour. I tend to draw while sitting down watching TV, things like that. So I don't really want to do watercolour in the living room. So I don't get to do it as often as I would like. Here's a piece of paper I just grabbed and I was watching a video and drew these hands. And then later on, I drew this one and I liked it. So it got surrounded with orange. A little bit more watercolour doodling. I learnt a lot about watercolour doodling from Shada Campbell. She does some lovely flowers, so I am going to try to watch more of her videos and improve that area. More hands again. As you can see, these are the good ones. And that is an awful butterfly. Anatomically completely incorrect, but it was pretty and it amused me. I had this piece of paper from an old lot of photographs I had. And this was one of the backing papers off a photograph that had fallen off. And it's Elliot and Fry Limited, Baker Street, London. So I thought, hmm, I'll do Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson on there. And a cute little teddy bear holding a balloon. This was one of my first attempts at drawing a complete person, face, body and clothing. This is on a piece of paper I glued in because, again, the felt pens had come through and I thought, well, I won't waste that. I'll stick a piece of paper over it and use it to draw on. And as you can see there, I drew this on the 7th of February this year. More doodling with a little bit of colouring using watercolour pencils here. I was using my fine liners and thought, this is taking forever to colour in the dark bit, so I'll use something thicker to colour in the thicker bits. And then when I watered down my watercolours, everything ran and looked a bit of a mess. And over on this one here, you can see it's a bit blotchy there too. So I won't make that mistake again. One thing I do like is this black and white with the green here. I just really love that colour combination. Not the best drawing in the world. But again, I'm, I was trying to draw full bodies of people with heads. At least this one doesn't have the look of I've been hit in the face with a baseball bat, because some of them do. I just can't seem to get the face to pull out. And I like the green, black and white, so I did some palm trees and they just looked a little bit bare and I wasn't sure what to do. So then I decided to draw some lines and things and I don't think... It's the look I was looking for because I just loved the contrast of just the green, black and white. But I've ended up with turquoise and orange and yellow and brown. And then a little bit more doodling. I do enjoy doodling. It's quite therapeutic. A little bit of practice. I was trying to learn calligraphy and I was trying to write below Bottoms Bridge, as you can see there. So that's just lots of words. And more. And here's a doodle I did, which is red, white and black. I love red, white and black. Lots of things in my house are red, white and black. So this just worked perfectly. The only thing is this shoe. I think that should have been like that. It looks more like a lollipop or a tree. That way it almost dangles like a mace. 
and on the back the felt came through so I decided I'd decorate the back too. It's not as vibrant by any means but it kept me busy and used up another page of my sketchbook. Then I decided to do some real life drawing so I looked up on the coffee table and there was my little iPad and the remote control, my spotty mic, a clip. There were no mushrooms on my coffee table. I just love drawing mushrooms. And there wasn't a poodle on my coffee table either. More hand drawing. Now, it can be boring sometimes, drawing hands after hands, but I found that I'm getting to understand the anatomy of a hand much better. And now, when I draw a hand, it's starting to look more realistic than Lego Man-like. And another doodle. I like this one. Again, it's the green, the black and the white. Nice combination. I decided to draw some little circles behind the stripes. I'm not sure if that worked. Hmm, jury's out on that one. And again, I used the back. So I did a completely different pattern, as you can see, there to there. But I did the blobs. I suppose I should have done something with these, but I like that pattern. So it stayed like that. And some people. Now, I really struggled with people. I found it very difficult to do when hair was a nightmare. Everybody looked like they had a cap on. And this person's got lots of issues. So then I watched a Tal Art video. I hadn't seen her videos before and I was really inspired. This was on the 3rd of February, so I'm not quite sure why the date's all messed up. I think I went back and did some art on the back of the pages later. This I particularly love. That's really got a gorgeous flow to it. I think I went a bit wild there. She said to just be extravagant and do what you like. I think I maybe was a little too extravagant. What do you think? Uh, I love this with the bunches or the buns, but I still need a lot of work there. And then this person, I was trying to do plaits or braids, went terribly wrong. So I just gave it a horrified face and moved on. Right, my first chippies. Yes, they were a disaster. Again, look at the problem with the hair. So I like this one with surprise because she's holding a bunch of flowers behind her. I call this person Basin Boy because he looks like he's got a basin haircut. This was Zombie because he's a little bit creepy. And Scarlet, just because she had red hair and I couldn't think of another name for her. And then again from Tal Art, some more ideas. And I tried colouring these in with my glitter pens, but the colouring didn't work very well. There's lots of gaps. But I like this hair and this one. Not so keen on that one. And now we're back to chibis. They all have better hair, except for this one. This one looks more like a mushroom. Right, now I decided to focus on hair. I really need to sort something out with my hair. So I followed a few tutorials. I had a look at a few pictures on the internet and came up with these and I think I'm getting somewhere with it now because it's starting to look more like realistic hair. Even though the faces are not really very realistic, are they? And also, I tried some blue lead. I'm not as keen on blue lead as I thought I'd be because it doesn't drop out very easily. So that was frustrating, but it's a nice change from just using the grey. Now this person I drew before I learned to do hair and there was a big gap here. So I decided, right, OK, then I'm going to try with my newfound talent, <laughs> if you want to call it that, to try drawing this person with her hair buns there. And I think it's much more of an improvement on this. Now, I know I'm on two sketchbooks ahead of this and I'm starting to get a little bit more hang with like shading and things like that. But even so, you can see there's a real jump here. So for me, the answer is to just keep drawing and drawing and drawing. Watching videos is great, but unless I actually put pencil to paper, I don't find I'm improving very fast. So every day I draw. Now this was on the 9th of March. And I have to say, this was supposed to be my husband. It looks nothing like him. This is not the man I'm married to. I cannot. I tried drawing from real life. He was watching TV and I thought I'd draw him and it was a failure. So. It's a person, but I don't know who that person is. This was quite a turning point for me. It just looks like a random doodle picture. But I got this far. I put in the pastels. I love black and white. So it looked like this. And I was thinking I really need to brighten it up, put some colour into it, make it more interesting. 
but I didn't want to. And then I was listening to somebody. I can't remember who they were. They said, it's your sketchbook. If you want to leave five pages empty and blank, you can. It's your work. You do what you want. And I thought, well, I like it like that. So even though I feel I should fill it out, because most doodle pictures are filled out, they don't have these huge white spaces. I just love it as it is. And again, this is the back. That's the remains of the felt pen that's come through, the ink. So I doodled on that too. Just a little bit of practice. See what my pens were actually coming out like, which then became a bit of a mess because I decided very cleverly to do watercolour on the back which I gave up on because the writing came through on this side too and it's just a disaster. More drawing of people, chibis, and my baby's okay. What girl's okay? I drew this on the 10th of February, 20. Now this was going to be a glamorous lady with long flowing curly blonde hair and it didn't turn out quite like that. So I put, oh scary, because I think she is looking pretty scary there and a little bit of drawing. More doodles. You can see at this point I'm starting to get quite exhausted with all the efforts I'm making to draw people and hands and faces. So I've done an awful lot of these just doodling. So this one and this one. And then you can see me drawing some hands. Now I'm quite pleased with these. I didn't draw around the outsides of them because I didn't want the pen to come through here and then I learned something magical that I had no idea of. I know, I'm 56 and I didn't know that alcohol markers will come through the paper and water-based markers won't. So, I hadn't put any markers around there. I've since bought myself some aqua markers. So, letter set aqua markers. So now I can do things like that and it doesn't come through the paper. So there we go, some hands. And then I got to thinking, Mm. Other people have really exciting sketchbooks with things everywhere and mine is far too sensible. So I decided to be scruffy and messy and put time to get messy. And that was about as messy as I could let myself go. So that's it. That's probably the extent of my erratic brain work. I said, this sketchbook is far too neat. I stuck some paper in. I'd been doodling while sat somewhere else with this lady, so I decided, right, I'm going to cut that out. It's a bit of a mess, but I'm popping it in anyway because it doesn't matter. And then I watched a tal art video and she was showing how to draw hair again. And she also said to practice drawing with a biro because if you're drawing with a pencil, you can keep rubbing out. You have to be more determined and more flexible if you use a biro, which I did, or a ballpoint pen. And I came up with these, which, other than this one, I'm quite pleased with and I think this looks like Linus. More hand drawing practice. Sorry if my book keeps wandering up, it's just that my camera isn't particularly central so I have to keep trying to find out where it is. Right, hair. I decided I was going to do lots of different hairs and I was just going to colour in the ones I liked and I actually liked them all. So this one I'm a little bit unsure of because it looks a little bit like some sort of creature but it's supposed to be the back of somebody's hair. And again, this is the back of the page so I just filled it in with some silly nonsense. More doodling. One thing I've learned. I don't like doodling in pale colours like this. I like my black and white. So on the back, I use black to go over the leaked through ink I think that's actually nicer than that. A lot less sludgy. Then I decided to draw some men's hair. Hmm. This is my problem with faces. I don't seem to... I try. I tell my hands what to do. My brain knows what to do, but I can't seem to get my hands to draw these faces pulled out any more than they do. They're always quite flat there. So this is something I'm working on at the moment. Just a little bit of trying out my pens. I wasn't very successful. They are old, but it could have been the fact I was using them wrong, but they were very drippy and messy. And more hands. As you can see, I was really working hard to get my hands right. And some superheroes, just from my head, when I was sat bored and thought, I'll just whip up a couple of superheroes, as you do. All right, we've got some flowers here. 
I had a nice idea to draw these flowers with all different expressions. Some were better than others, but I think it gave me an idea of how to draw an expression, but I still haven't learned how to draw glass and colouring glass, so I've left the glass clear. I can always revisit this at another point, but I didn't want to try learning another skill at the moment because I've got so much trying to go on in my head as it is. And again, there's the back. So I didn't worry there. I just did a sort of stripey vase or vase, however you call it. This is some swatches I did for a swatch video when I got myself some Pro Markers second hand off eBay. I didn't know if I was going to get good pens or bad pens because even though somebody says they're good, they're not always as good as they reckon. But I was quite pleased I didn't have any that were run out. Here's some tracing of hands that I did to try and get the hang of things. Apparently tracing is good for you. I thought it was cheating, but somebody was saying, no, oh, it helps with your line formation. So there we go. Interesting hands there. And this is upside down. Turn it that way. So we got baby hands. So they chubby and compact. As you can see, I still didn't have my aqua markers, so I'm still not surrounding these at the moment. Right, now you've seen these, so we'll just flip over these quickly. And get on to more doodles. I was watching a few tutorials on how to draw lips, so I grabbed an old postcard of mine and just drew, oops, drew them up that way, some lips. And then I put some on a piece of paper and did this and then mouth. I wanted to draw a face, but it takes me so long to draw a face. I didn't really want to spend ages drawing the other half. So I thought, well, if I do two thirds of the lips, then it saves me time over here and I can focus on what I'm supposed to be drawing. And then I drew this person supposed to be going Mwah. I don't know if she is going Mwah. I fancy drawing a witch but I've still got a lot to learn there and there's a baby and again my pens coming through the paper it was really frustrating men again I tried drawing my husband it still doesn't look anything like him one day I'll draw a picture and I can tell you this is what my husband looks like because I've actually drawn him there's a picture I'd seen somebody draw something like this, which I liked, so I tried it out. It's much more difficult with felt pens, though. That's my excuse. I think it would have been much better in watercolour. Back onto faces. Now, I'd drawn these on some scrap bits of paper, so I mounted them on a little bit of black paper and drew the word face, just to brighten up my sketchbook a little bit. And more faces. I love this one. I think she looks quite ghostly, like as if she's off a creepy horror movie. I'm not quite sure why I like it, but it uh, just appeals to me. And then, hmm. Like some more people I've been drawing. Now, this is one of the first full bodied ones I drew, and you can see she really is like a sack of spuds. I improved a little bit by that one, and I. Not quite sure where that came between these, but it's not got any clothes on, so I assume it was quite early. And another set of lips. And another one of those in red, black and white. And there's another red, black and white. Right, we've got some bodies now. Whoa, he's got a very big chest, doesn't he? A bit like Triangular Man. And i drawn on the other side, and so decided I'd use the run through ink again and just drew this person with her fluffy slippers on. Right, and there she is. This was the original and I've drawn this girl here and you can see the marker hasn't come through because at this point I'd had my aqua markers. So I was really pleased there. I can start to do surrounds again. Right, this was my attempt at somebody old. I think I've got the baggy eyelids, okay, but there are no wrinkles. She's a little bit too perfect, I think. So, and there's not a lot of shading on this because I was just starting my shading. Got a little bit on the nose and the chin, but the hat desperately needs some. And then the debate starts. Do I go back and alter all these or shall I keep them as a record of where I've come from? And I'm really tempted to just leave them as they are and move on. My husband bought me a Cadbury's Dairy Milk Chocolate Buttons Easter Egg, which I ate far too early. And then glued the piece of tin foil onto the, the sheet and decided to put some faces on because I didn't know what to put on there. 
And then I started my draw a person every day. So this started on the 27th of February. And I just decided every day, no matter how boring and tedious, I would draw a person. So we're going up the 27th, 28th and 29th of February and the 1st of March. And at this point, I changed over to another sketchbook. And I'm just going to put this drawing of a person a day in there because I think it would be good to keep that separate as a record of just how I'm developing. And I'm quite enjoying that. Every morning I get up, I have my breakfast, I draw another person. Right. This is a castle again, not very good shading on it because I hadn't really got to grips with shading. I think even though it's nice to have the pastel colours, I'd have liked some darker areas. So that's something I'm going to have to work on. And this is the Winnie the Pooh that was on the side of the sheet out of a book. So I just measured him up and then tried to copy him and wrote the word Pooh. I do like Winnie the Pooh. Another face. I was drawing this hand and it went wrong. So I decided to turn it into a creepy hand, because that way then covers a multitude of sins. Ah, and a few of these are snuck in on the end. Where did they come from? So that's the 1st of March, 2nd of March and 3rd of March. Right, so my book must be from the 4th of March. I have been quite prolific in my drawing over the last few months, and so I am finding that I'm surprised because I forget what I've drawn. I like this one particularly because of the movement. It's the first one that's had a really good look of movement. I was pleased with the way that got captured. It was nice not to have them standing looking like they've dropped their dumbbells. And then, for a little bit of humour, ceci n'est pas le fin. As they have, there's that famous painting, ceci n'est pas un pipe. Well, that's saying this isn't a pipe when it was, and this is saying this isn't the end. But it is the end, because it's my last page. But it isn't the end, because I'm going to carry on on my next sketchbook. So there we go. A little bit of an enigma. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my sketchbook tour. It's been quite a long one. And I'm going to show you this one next. But if you've enjoyed the video, then please give us a thumbs up. It would be great if you could subscribe, because over the next days, months, years, I'm hoping to improve my art and you can come along on that journey with me and hopefully it'll inspire you to improve, inspire you to get started and if nothing else it may get you to do more art because at the end of the day from what I can see the secret to becoming a better artist is to do more art. I'll see you all next time. Bye!